You won't believe this true story, a constitutional tug of war. In the post-Civil War era, the U.S. government was like a group of siblings trying to share a giant pizza. Everyone wanted a slice, but no one could agree on how much sauce the Constitution should have. Congress, still feeling peppy after passing the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments, was flexing its legislative muscles, while the president was over here like, Hey, remember me? The executive branch? Meanwhile, the Supreme Court was hanging out in the back with a gavel, just waiting to slap down a decision like Plessy v. Ferguson to remind everyone, Judicial review is a thing, guys. The rule of law was about as flexible as the Wild West's interpretation of rules, which, let's be honest, often involved a saloon brawl to settle the question of checks and balances. Separation of powers? More like separation of opinions. As railroad tycoons built monopolies with the gusto of a toddler stacking blocks, the question of limited government loomed large. The Gilded Age was all about who could skirt the rules the best, big business or politicians. The government's job was to keep the peace, but with so many loopholes in the Constitution being tested. It was like watching a lawyer jump hurdles while trying not to spill his coffee. Judicial review had its hands full, trying to rein in overzealous state governments and presidential overreach, while Congress yelled from the peanut gallery, Hey, we've got an amendment for that. In the end, the lasting impact of this tug of war was a clear realization. The Constitution was like a rubber band. Stretchy, but eventually, someone was going to snap it back into place.